Hi, in this video, we'll look at how to resize the drawings of our letters. So I already have some code written on my editor. So this is coming from the previous video where we looked at how to turn our drawing functions into individual function with parameters. So if you haven't checked out that video, definitely watch that first. Otherwise, I will leave the link to this code down in the description. And let's check out our current setup. So we have three different function definitions, draw C, draw E, and draw F. And of course, later if you design more letters, you can add more functions like this. So now we can set the type on screen, anywhere on screen, because we have added these two parameters, X and Y. So if you type any number here, you can change where it's drawn. And we also have a third parameter for stroke weight that is passed down to the definition and used in this stroke weight function call. So that's good. But the thing is, uh, we can only draw each letter at its original size. So on the left side, I have my original drawing here. So I'm using 10 units and 20 units for width and height. And each unit is 10 pixels wide and 10 pixels tall. So basically, I'm drawing each letter within 100 pixel wide and 200 pixel tall uh, pixel grid. And what I want to do is to set the font size with pixel. So for instance, if I, let's say I have fourth parameter, which I will add a little later in this video. So if I say 24, then I want my C shape to be drawn at 24 pixel size. And I will map this size whatever pixel value that I'll be using to the height of my letter, this 200 pixel height. So it will need some conversion here, right? To turn 200 pixel to 24. So same here, if I say 100, then I want my letter to be drawn at 100 pixel size. And you might ask, because now we know a little bit about matrix transformation, we could add scale here, right? So scale one will be equal to the default value so it doesn't do anything, but if I say 0.5, then everything will be half the size. So this can definitely work. But one issue I've seen is that when you use scale, you are not only making each drawing smaller or bigger, but you are actually manipulating the entire coordinate system. So basically, each pixel on screen could become smaller or bigger than how it shows up on screen. And that can make future calculations a bit tricky. And of course, I'm sure there is a way to figure this all out with scale. But for now, I will directly update my coordinate values. So let me remove scale function. And let's do a little bit of math. So let me write some comments down here. So my current size is 200 pixel. So I'm gonna make this 200 pixel to let's say one pixel. I want to set my font size to be one pixel. Then what do I need to do? I need to divide by 200. So I'm looking at the ratio between original size to my desired size. So let's look at another example. I want to make this 200 pixel to 50 pixel. I need to divide by four. 200 over four becomes my desired font size of 50 pixel. So let's take a look at one more example. So make 200 pixel. Let's say I want to set my font to 100 pixel. Then I need to divide my original size by 2. Because 200 over 100 is 2. So now we looked at three different examples. Uh, let me make it a little simpler. I like to just keep it as a multiplication instead of dividing here. So to make 200 pixel to 1 pixel, we can either divide by 200 or multiply by 1 over 200. It's the same thing. So whichever you prefer, but multiply by 1 over 4, multiply by 1 over 2. So out of these three numbers, we can come up with more general formula that we can reuse for setting any type size. So this number is what we're interested in getting so that we can multiply and update all my coordinates. So how do we get this number? I will call it a factor. 
In the third example, how can we come up with this 1 over 2? That's pretty simple. We already have an answer. 200, the original size, and the 100, my font size. So font size over original size. So 100 over 200 is a factor of 1 half. And same with the second example. Font size of 50 over original size 200 becomes 1 quarter. 50 over 200 is 1 quarter. Same here, right? So font size 1 over original size 200 becomes 1 over 200. So that's the factor. So let's continue on. So I'm going to add the fourth parameter, which I will call it fs. So that will become the font size in pixel. And I will take this fs variable and use it to calculate my factor, which I will just call f, because I don't want to type long variable name, at least in my function definition here. And then font size is fs that I'm taking it from my function call, which will be passed down here to here. And original size in this design is always 200 pixel, so 200. So that's my factor. That's how I get my factor. And now we get this value f. We need to update all my coordinates. Looking good. So I set it to 400 pixel, the same size as my canvas. And it looks like that's what it's doing. The white space here and here is because of a uh, space for ascender and descender. So that, that's fine. But at least we can sort of imagine this invisible box that has the same proportion as my original design. That's great. So let me remove all these extra comments, but maybe leave this formula just in case we need it later. And let me also comment out E and F so we can just clearly see the shape C. So if I change to 100, that becomes 100. What 10 becomes 10. It almost look like, um, looks like just like a rect. And that's because of my stroke weight. Stroke weight is always the same, no matter what my font size is. So it looks like when I increase my font size, it looks like my uh, letter is getting thinner. But because now we have this factor, so we can also multiply with factor for the stroke weight so that we can keep increasing or decreasing based on the current font size. So this is really great, right? This one variable can handle all the sizing, resizing, and even stroke weight. So let's try this time. If I go pretty small, it still maintains that relative stroke weight. Same thing at the very smaller size. I hope you can see it. Now it's not a rect anymore. So this is a pretty solid setup. So you might want to go ahead and also update the other drawing functions you have to have the same structure. So let me just repeat it for our drawing E function, just so you know how it can be repeated. So I'm just going to add first parameter, fs, exactly the same as my draw C function. And I will also get f, that factor just like that, and use it to update all my values. You're just gonna have to take some time and uh, repeat the same steps. So that's basically the idea, okay? So I hope you will spend some time, update your functions, and if this math sounds a little confusing, I will leave some useful links in the description and I will see you in the next video.